set time for lunch and set time for dinner, you may have to pay more. Have cappuccino after 11 a.m. in Italy. This is not true. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Thursday video. I hope that I'm definitely back on Thursdays and I really, really hope to be delivering more videos on Thursdays, more regularly from now on. And in today's video, I want to give you a few tips, a few ideas, my thoughts on how to maximize your experience in Italian restaurants in Italy. I know it might sound weird, however, trust me, there are a few things that you want to know so you never end up disappointed. And without further ado, guys, let's get started. My tip number one, guys, is to always double check the opening hours. Here's the thing, the majority of Italian restaurants will not be open for the entire day. Usually they open for lunch from like 12 p.m. to 2 or 3 p.m. and then they close to reopen once again around 6 or 7 p.m. and until like, you know, 11 p.m. or even midnight for dinner. There is like this set time for lunch and set time for dinner. That is the norm in Italian restaurants. Attention though, some of them might be open for either lunch or dinner and not for both. And I've even encountered some exceptions when traveling around Italy. For example, when I traveled to the north of Italy like two months ago, and if you haven't seen my videos from there, I will leave you all the links in the description box and also one link up here. There, I've encountered restaurants with the weirdest opening hours. Some of them were open like from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then during the actual lunchtime, they were closed to reopen once again at 4 p.m. Very strange, very weird, but apparently the restaurant staff wanted to have lunch as well, which makes sense. However, having said that, guys, always double check the opening hours because, you know, it's not very pleasant to come to the restaurant and find it be closed. So be prepared. The next tip regards the Italian coffee shops and it is to come to your breakfast early. Now, if you've been here for a while, guys, you probably know that the most typical Italian breakfast is coffee or cappuccino and brioche. I personally love it, honestly. It gets called brioche or cornetto based on the region, however, it's essentially a croissant, the way you might know it. And if you don't have breakfast at your hotel or you want to have breakfast in a coffee shop, like many Italians do, I highly recommend you to come early because most coffee shops, most pastry shops have a very limited amount of pastries, like they bake them themselves and they bake a limited amount of pastries, which makes total sense. So uh, to have a wider choice, to be able to choose whatever you want, it's obviously better to come early. And also because they will not bake them for the entire day. And you know, croissant is the best when it's fresh from the oven. So if you come early, you'll catch it when it's still warm, which is the best way to have your croissant. The next tip is about the coffee prices. The coffee prices in various coffee shops may vary greatly. And I know what you might be thinking right now, that obviously if you get a cappuccino, you're gonna pay more than for a cup of espresso. However, that's not what I'm talking about. The thing is, if you want to have your coffee seated at the table and served by the waiter, you may have to pay more. This kind of service is called Servizio al Tavolo and most coffee shops, not all, but many of them will apply this kind of a service fee. However, if you opt to having your coffee standing at the bar, al banco, in this case, you will have to pay less. The difference is not that big usually, maybe like 30 to 50 cents. However, sometimes the difference might actually be quite big because sometimes you may have your cappuccino for like 150 or 180 standing al banco and then pay three or even 350 euros for your cappuccino while seated at the table. So it really depends. Be prepared for it. As I said, it's not true for all coffee shops. However, many of them do have this servizio al tavolo option. So be prepared that your bill might be a little bit higher if you decide to uh, sit at the table. Moving on to other hidden fees in the Italian restaurant, there is a thing in Italy that is called coperto. Coperto is another service fee that is applied in the majority of the restaurants. It is actually very uncommon to see a restaurant that will not have this service fee, this coperto fee, because most of them, like maybe 90% of them do have it. 
The service fee in this case applies for the service and sometimes water and or bread will be included in your coperto, but most commonly it is just for the service. It will usually be written somewhere in the menu, maybe on the bottom or on top of the menu, the amount of the, the service fee that you will have to pay and differently to some other countries where the service fee is calculated in percents, here it's usually a set fee. It may be something from one to three years per person, so keep that in mind and always know that there will be most probably this kind of a hidden fee at the end of your dinner when you get the bill. If you guys want to know how to save money while traveling in Italy, I will leave you a link to my playlist of traveling on a budget here. So check it out. And if you enjoy my videos, if you find them helpful, don't be shy and hit the thanks button down below near the like button if you want to help me support this channel. Going back to the coffee shops, guys, there is something you should know about the hours when drinking coffee is I don't like the word acceptable, but it's easier in Italy. I will explain myself now. I don't like this whole uh, discussion of when it is acceptable to have cappuccino or something like that, because there will be bloggers who will tell you that you will not be able to have cappuccino after 11 a.m. in Italy, and this is not true. Obviously, the baristas will make you cappuccino if you ask for it at any time, and I personally have Italian friends who drink cappuccino after 11 a.m. and that's perfectly fine. However, if you want to have your coffee in the evening, it might actually be complicated because coffee is usually not the beverage of choice in the afternoon or, you know, like after 4 p.m. maybe. If you uh, want to have coffee after lunch, it's perfectly fine. You'll find it anywhere. However, if you try searching for coffee after 6 p.m. or, God forbid, after 9 p.m., chances are you will not find it. Not because the baristas will not make you some coffee, but because they have already started to clean up everything and to clean up their coffee machines, and most likely they won't be able to do it, even if they want to. However, keep in mind that most restaurants will actually serve you coffee after dinner, even at 11 p.m. That's perfectly fine because Italians drink coffee, maybe not cappuccino, maybe just an espresso. However, Italians drink coffee after dinner as a digestive, so if you go out to have dinner, then you will be able to have coffee even late at night. My next tip for today, guys, regards the most authentic Italian restaurants. I am convinced that the most authentic, the best Italian restaurants are usually kind of hidden on those narrow streets, you know, side streets. Obviously, they are not in the spotlight in the touristic areas. And it really pains me to see the tourists sitting in the restaurants in these very touristy places on the main piazzas and probably not enjoying their meal just as much as they could have enjoyed it. I'm not saying that all of these places are bad. However, it's very often, you know, that you'll find these places uh, to be overpriced and the food quality might actually be disappointing. However, if you manage to find these small osterias and they're often, you know, owned by a single family and they have this uh, home-style cooked meals and these are the most amazing places where you get the most authentic experience and you'll enjoy it the most, trust me. Uh, I would recommend you, if you want to find a place like this, to A, search in these side streets, not in the main touristic areas, obviously, but also if you manage to read at least a little bit Italian, or maybe use Google Translator, to look for the places where the reviews are mostly in Italian. And like this, you will be sure that the locals go there and the locals recommend this place. And if locals approve of this place, chances are you will absolutely love it. And my last tip for today, guys, would be to always look for local specialities. You probably know that I love trying local specialities wherever I go, whether it's a new region, a new city, or even a new town or village. Most of these places will have something very special, very unique to their place, even if it's a small village, guys, because that's Italy, you know, and that's amazing. Even a small village will have a unique dish or dessert, you know, a drink, something that you will not find anywhere else. Always try to do a little research and then try these specialities. And if you don't know what to try, don't be shy and ask the owner or, you know, the staff of what is so unique to their place. And trust me, you enjoy it hugely. 
If you want to learn more about Italian food, I will also leave you a link up here to my food playlist because sometimes I go around trying local specialities, local food and even uh, seasonal food because obviously each season, each holiday has its own set of food in Italy. It's a very big deal, so make sure to check it out. And that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this chit chat video. You probably know by now that I am a huge lover of Italy and I really enjoy sharing this love with you. So if you're new here, welcome to Dramatically Expatic. I make lots of travel vlogs, but also videos like this when I talk about life here, expat life and traveling to Italy in general. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. And as always, guys, don't forget to like, comment and share this video with your friends so I can make more videos like this. I hope that I managed to inspire you to come to Italy and try all of the goodness that its country has to offer because Italy and food is an eternal love story and i am pretty happy about it you know thank you guys for being here enjoy your day and i will see you in the next video